several people wrote in and want uh, a version of this question, and I want to put it to both of you, yes or no. Do you believe Governor McDonald should consider resigning over this, Mr. Cuccinelli? Well, look, I'm the sitting attorney general, and uh, I don't think it's appropriate for the sitting attorney general to call for the resignation uh, of the governor. Uh, I, there are two investigations running right now, a federal investigation and a state investigation. I began the state investigation. Uh, my referral to the local Commonwealth attorney is how the state investigation began. So I think while that question is appropriate to ask Governor McDonnell, and it is appropriate to ask him to think about that, I don't think it's appropriate for the sitting attorney general to address it when I started one of the investigations. You think it's appropriate to ask him to think about it? Is that what you just yes. said? Yes. Mr. McAuliffe, should he consider resigning? Well, only Governor McDonald knows the facts. I don't think I should call for his resignation. In fact, uh, several Democrats have come out to ask for his resignation. I say, everybody should stand down. We have an investigation going on. Let's get the facts out. You shouldn't be tried through the newspapers and the media. Let's, let's see where it goes. Only he knows what's involved. If you know any of these stories are out, I would agree, agree with the attorney general that you know he should consider it. If you know, but he knows the facts, um, and it's only up to the governor who, at this stage, can make it. Let's let investigations go, and let's not prejudge an investigation. Mr. McAuliffe, you mm -hmm. have. This is something that came up a few minutes ago. You have talked about yourself as a job creator. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, you did promise green tech. Uh, this electric car company would bring lots of jobs to Virginia. You've discussed it. A few minutes ago, it didn't bring jobs to Virginia. You also promised jobs through a company called Franklin Pellets, mm -hmm. which was going to convert a paper mill into a biomass power plant. Critics are saying it undercuts your claim to be a job creator. A number of newspapers in the state have editorialized about this. They're asking you to come clean on what your job record is as a job creator. and. Uh, what, what you present to the people of this state because you are known as a businessman, an yep. investor. And, and, and you want a governor who's trying new technologies. There's a lot of things I could have done the last couple of years with my capital and my time. I chose to take on several very innovative, futuristic business opportunities. I think that's exciting, entrepreneuristic. Uh, they, no place was ever promised anything. You've got to bid. I mean, that's how you do business. And whoever puts it out, you've got to make the decision. Uh, as Franklin Pellets, a great new exciting thing that is working very hard. In fact, I want to thank the Attorney General. Um, we just signed a 20-year lease at the port, and he authorized that, so I want to thank him for his work on Franklin Pellets. But what I will bring to this is a 42-year business career. I started my first business when I was 14 years old, so I could help pay for college. I was a bank chairman by the age I was 30. I was chairman of a home building company. Built over six, uh, nearly 6,000 homes and a lot of folks involved. I've been involved my entire career in dozens of companies either starting or investing. That's what you want in your governor. A governor that's willing to take those chances, invest your own capital. A governor who has sweated out payrolls. A governor who understands the ups and downs of business. And not everything always works out the way you hope, but you are in that arena. You're learning from that. But I'll bring a 42 years of experience in a wide variety of different businesses. And I give credit to those entrepreneurs who are in the arena. You know, I'll be honest with you. It's not easy starting a car company. Not many people have done it in the world, especially a neighborhood electric vehicle to be versed in the globe. I remind you that Nissan took 18 years to develop the Leaf. Our company's done it in four. Got a lot of work to do, but it's exciting. That's what you want an entrepreneur, someone willing to take it to the next level. And that's what our children want from our governor so that they have those 21st century jobs here in Virginia. Invest your own capital, like that Mississippi tax money that got him to walk over Martinsville, to leave Virginia, abandon people he acknowledged right here in Virginia needed just one more facility to start it down in Mississippi. That's invest your own capital. Now, if you're there means taxpayers, then it's accurate, then it's accurate. You know, in, in January, he was still acting like he was the chairman of Green Tech and still it, till it became obvious it was going south and in April decided to tell people, well, I wasn't chairman since December. And PolitiFact checked that also. And he said, we're making pellets there at Franklin Pellets, selling them to Europe. That was never true. It was never true. He will say whatever he thinks he needs to say 
to get elected. And the notion of being a businessman is kind of offensive, frankly, to a lot of people who've started from scratch and started their own business. I suspect that asphalt business fits that category very well, but green tech doesn't. And that's what he was running on for months. Look at me, I'm a big job creator. Vote for me to be governor, I'll be your job creator. Except he isn't. Remember the promises? 900 jobs by the end of 2012. Only months from the end of 2012. It wasn't true when he said it, and it wasn't true at the end of 2012. I go back to 42 years in business. My opponent has no business record to speak of. And I have learned the ups and downs in business, but I have tried very entrepreneurial. And as I say, a business has to make a business decision and protect shareholders. You have a fiduciary duty in a business to protect your shareholders. A fiduciary duty, frankly, that you forgot, Ken, as Attorney General, when you were taking all these gifts from Johnny Williams and Star Scientific. You had a fiduciary duty there, sir. I have a fiduciary duty to make sure shareholders are well protected. You had a fiduciary duty to protect the citizens of Virginia to get back $1.7 million that was owed us. Instead of taking him to court, he was taking you to New York City. He was giving you a Mountain Lake Resort, Smith Mountain Lake Resorts. He was buying you $1,500 turkey dinners. You know, that's a lot of turkey. In addition, <laughs> in addition, you were buying his stock, not disclosing any of it. You were staying at his home in Richmond. So if you want to talk about responsibility, he can't talk about business because he doesn't have a record. Judy, I got to respond to this. Uh, you can, uh, but you know, that's his fiduciary responsibility. He didn't meet it. Didn't disclose any of it. We disclosed plenty of it. I made several mistakes on disclosure. And who brought them forward? I did. No one was going to find them. Not only did I bring them forward, I then turned them over to the local prosecutor and asked for an independent review. Does anyone in this room think Terry McAuliffe would have ever done something like that? Of course not. My commitment to transparency goes way beyond just admitting my own mistakes and putting them in front of the people of Virginia. I've released eight years of my tax returns. You can see what I was doing back in my business. And as Congressman Jim Moran said last year, you know, if you want to run the economy, he was talking about America, I'm talking about Virginia, you ought to be willing to put your finances out there and let the people see them. I put eight years of my tax returns out. Terry McAuliffe, in his book, he says, hey, if you got nothing to hide, release the documents. So what have you got to hide? Release your tax returns. I think the people of Virginia, right now more than ever, need confidence in the transparency and commitment to transparency of the next governor. Well, if you want to talk about disclosure, I've gone up and beyond what is required. Same thing Governor McDonald, Governor Kane, Governor Warner have done. If you want to talk about disclosure, let us be clear. Johnny Williams owed the state $1.7 million. Star Scientific, the same gentleman that gave the governor all these gifts, at the same time was <laughs> given the attorney general gifts as well. Once it got hot up, of course, he disclosed at that point, he had FBI agents coming in all over the Commonwealth of Virginia. And he didn't disclose any of it. That's why I've called for two things. One, an independent ethics commission. Two, a $100 gift ban. And I would ask the Attorney General to join me, $100. Ken, you can buy a lot of turkey with 100 bucks. But I'm asking that what we need to do is have a $100 gift ban, and I would ask the General Assembly to pass it immediately upon you know, my being uh, sworn in as governor. And if they don't, I will do an executive order for my family and me that I will take no gifts over $100. But no state elected official should take over $100. And it's, he did not disclose. He didn't disclose he was buying stock. He didn't disclose it. And he didn't disclose any of his gifts. And you want to talk about disclosure, I think that's very important. You want to respond to that, and then I have a question. Uh, well, we're getting into particulars here. And I was disclosing all along. I didn't get everything. Uh, but just this past week, a Democrat prosecutor found that I had not broken the law. I did exactly what I said I'd done, that I had unwittingly forgotten a couple of items. And there are admittedly some substantial ones in there, but it wasn't hiding Johnny Williams or Star Scientific. My transparency and my commitment to it go back a long, long ways. In 2009, when I ran for AG, I ran on a partially on an ethics agenda. We got some of those things passed. When I was in the state Senate, 
I fought very hard to get an inspector general. I fought to get budget transparency. And I'm offering that as someone running for governor, is transparency of my own personal budget. And Terry won't do that. He still refuses to do that, even though he called on Mitt Romney to do it last year. Let's be clear about the report that just came out. Let's make this if we could, this is an important point, Judy, and Mike Herring's report. If you read the whole report, which I have done, it says in here that the attorney general should have been prosecuted, but the Virginia disclosure laws are insufficient. It also revealed, absolutely It wrong. also revealed something very else important. What it said in that report, and it's important, because Johnny Williams, we knew what Johnny Williams was doing for the Attorney General. Turkey dinners, trips to New York, Smith Mountain Lake Resort homes. But we didn't know what the Attorney General was doing for Johnny Williams. This report made it perfectly clear. Johnny Williams came to him and asked him how he could get cash out of the Tobacco Commission. He found his lawyer for him. So we know what Johnny was doing. Now we know what the Attorney General was doing for Johnny Williams. Quid pro quo. Mr. Cuccinelli. Yeah, that, that's just absolutely wrong. Uh, I got asked, can you refer me to somebody who can help me with the Tobacco Commission? Yes, sure, and I did. That was my only involvement. If, if that's, a, if that's a, a problem, you know, referring lawyers to lawyers, I think there are a lot of people in this room might be a little upset that we can't refer people to them. Um, that's all that happened there. The only thing from Star that came into the Attorney General's office was their tax case, and the only thing we have done the only thing we have done is fight it. That's it. That's it. The only thing Johnny Williams got out of the Attorney General's office is opposition, is opposition. No matter what Terry wants to do to tangle this up and make it more confusing, we've done our job in the Attorney General's office. We've done it right. And no one has gotten the kind of, how did you say it? Uh, you help me, I'll help you. That's politics. That is not my politics. That's Terry McAuliffe's politics. Well, let me just say, it's, it's, wait a minute, it's not true what he just said. I think it's an important point. This tax case came in. The Attorney General sat on it for nearly two years. We were owed $1.7 million. Finally, a judge took the case away from him because of a conflict of interest. And within several weeks, the two new attorneys, right. guess what? They had a court date immediately scheduled where they waited nearly two years and didn't get our Virginia taxpayer money back to us. Okay, so we can move on. Do you want to respond to that point about yeah, two years I, or not? Yeah, it's, uh, so much of it isn't accurate. It's, you know, where do you begin? I'll, I'll let the fact checkers take care of that 